Hi, this is 365821 and this is video number 8 in my Behind Closed Drawers BL Collection Tour series where I go through all of my BL collection. Um, in this drawer we will find June manga and June Yari novels and a couple of other random things as well. So if you're interested in my June manga collection uh, stick around and I'll go through some of what I've got. To start with, I'll just go through the two random things that I have in this drawer. And one is a Japanese volume of Finder. This is the second volume of Finder. Um, and this is what it looks like in Japanese. So I have a lot more uh, Japanese titles, but they're in my other collection and they're usually bo boxed up and kept um, all packed up. Uh, I, one day I will be able to unpack it all and put it up on shelves and make it look nice. But until then, I have this one random Japanese volume in my drawer just now. The second uh, random title is uh, Treasure Volume 2. Um, it says on it Studio Kawaii, but it's a Yaoi Press volume. Um, and I have in the past said I'm not really such a fan of uh, OEL. Um, and this is kind of one of the, the epitome of OEL, I guess. Uh, in terms of BL. The the type of art style is not to my liking. It's a little bit too childish and cartoony um, and it does remind me of sort of made for children type comics um, and so for me it feels a little bit disjointed to be reading something that is a BL in theme but has that sort of childlike um, quality. It's something that I come across in made for children uh, literature um, when they're trying to make graphic novels and comics that are both educational as well. So for me it seems a little bit disjointed um, in terms of the artwork and the story. And I just haven't bothered to actually read this yet because I haven't got the volume one so I don't know if the quality of the story is any good or not. Sorry about that. If you are a fan of OELs, I would actually like some recommendations. Are there any good ones out there that you, you think are quality? Because unfortunately I, I have a negative view of them. So I'm open to being convinced otherwise. But until then, I'm like, nah, I ain't reading this. Um, and why do I have it in my collection then? Just because it was like a couple of pounds and um, yeah, I actually got it free so um, they would just give it to me for free. <laughs> maybe other people have the same opinion as I do, that's maybe why they gave it away. But yeah, that's the other random thing I have in this drawer. Now I'm going to go through all of my uh, Yaoi novels to start with. Um, it, it's very interesting to have Yaoi novels. I actually really enjoy reading Yaoi novels uh, or BL novels um, and I do think it would be good if we could have more published because in Japan there are so many. So This is Better Than a Dream and this is written by uh, Raika Sakuragi and with illustrations by Katsumi Asanami. Um, Better Than a Dream is about um, someone who has lost the love of their life and then they find someone else later on so it's about that sort of growth of um, feelings and loss and it was quite sad actually I remember reading it feeling quite bad about the whole thing um, not really sure how I felt about the characters um, finally getting together um, I do have two copies in this drawer of Better Than a Dream um, it's a nice one, but it's a bit sad, so if you don't like sad stories, I would maybe shy away from this one. The second title I have to show is um, Secret Moon, and that's written by Shira Go and illustration by Sato Tomoe. Um, this is uh, my kind of story, <laughs> I love it. Um, it's a fantasy story, but it's set in a modern setting um, around Tokyo. Uh, there is a a, a Viscount or I think he's some sort of aristocrat um, with a, an English and Japanese name, love that, um, and he kind of has the 
sort of vampire qualities and um, a young man who seems to have werewolfish qualities as well and their relationship together. Um, it's fun, it's playful, it's, it's the kind of um, story that you might want to read around Halloween for a BL uh, Yaoi novel treat. So if you're interested in those kind of um, things that go bump in the night, bada bum <laughs> then you might be interested in Secret Moon. I really like it. This is the kind of uh, stuff that I just eat up with a spoon. It's just brilliant. Now this next title is The Guilty Volume 2 Original Sin and this is written by Katsura Izumi and the artwork is by someone we all recognize, Hinako Takanaga. Um, this is Volume 2 of the four volume series The Guilty which is incredibly hard to get a full complete set of. I have in my other collection some of the other volumes but I think I'm missing volume 3 which is the difficult one to get hold of, the expensive one to get hold of and one that I almost got for a really good price and I was just outbid on eBay. It was so excruciating. Uh, and it was, I think they got it for a really good price. I was like, oh, oh, oh. And just on the last second, they upped their bid just ever so slightly and, um, and got the full set. So someone was um, selling the full complete series and I unfortunately did not get it. So I am missing volume three. Uh, now this is a story about an author who's a bit of a douche. He's awful. He's really bad. What's his name? Hodaka? Uh, Kai, I think. And then there's Toya, who's a very weak Uke. Such a weak kind of character. He takes a long time to actually uh, get any strength of personality. So I can't really recommend this to everyone, um, although it is four volumes and it did sell really well. <laughs> So I enjoy the story actually, I think the Smexy Times are really well written, I really enjoy them. Um, but I'm okay with Paradynamics being a bit askew, um, and this is the kind of story that I, well, I love all BL stories, but this one, I, I like this story a lot, because it's kind of uh, the askew story, one, you know, the overbearing semi, very... Uh, yeah, no one really thinks that's great, but I think it's great. So yeah, this is a terrible, terrible story, but I love it. I love it. Uh, Toya does come into his own in the end, and it's nice to see him. I always like an Uke who comes around to their own sexuality. I like that. I like it. And there's a bit more um, in the later volume, because I think I have volume four, in the later volume when he uh, is a lot stronger as a personality. So yeah, it's an interesting one. If you can get hold of it, well done. Um, it's difficult to get hold of. It goes up in price. So yeah, volume three, if you see one around, let me know. But I doubt it'll be for a good price. It's always terribly, terribly expensive. Now this is the novelization of the manga Desire. So this is the novel Desire Dangerous Feelings. And um, it is written by Maki Kazumi and illustration by Yukine Honami. Um, so if you wanted to, you could just get the manga. The manga version is just called Desire. Um, this is about Ryochi and Toru, I think. Um, and it's, it's, it is a light high school boy type story, but um, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I just didn't really ever take to it. I never really felt uh, like it was an, an enjoyable read, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, Ryoji is a bit of a cad, he's uh, a bit of a man whore, and he suddenly turns around and is like, oh, you know, I get turned on by you. And uh, Toru, who's been in love with him for years, is like, oh, okay then, and just sleeps with him. And it's like, ugh, mwah. sort out your feelings first, guys. It's that kind of story where you're like, yeah, this could be, it's, it's the kind of story that I'm like, I'll read and I'll, I'll, be quite okay with but actually I don't think I fully enjoy I don't really know why but I didn't really fully enjoy this one um, I'm happy to have it in the collection obviously but not really my cup of tea so much like I said I paradynamics aren't really an issue so I don't really know what the issue is I don't know what it is about this one that I dislike I kind of feel like <sighs> Toru's not strong enough and Ryoji's just you know douche so I can't say that I like or sympathise with the characters, that's probably what it is. But yeah, 
desire dangerous feelings. I think I prefer the manga. This is another four volume series and this is volume one of the four volume series. I have the rest in my other collection. And this is S. So you can see the big S on the front. This is written by Saki Aida and the illustration is by Chiharu Nara. And I love this in the same way that the guilty has that sort of skewed power dynamic for the couple. Uh, this also has that, you know, that overbearing semi and um, but I much prefer this Uke. He's much, much more enjoyable as a character. He does have his flaws, but he's much stronger and I, I like that about it. Um, there is still obviously issues with this series if you are not interested in those kind of issues, that's fine. But I am okay with it. Um, and it's four volumes and it's long and I really enjoy it and the Smexy times are really well written. Mm -hmm -hmm. Very good. In fact, I just, I want to sit down and read this. <laughs> Um, but I want my other volumes as well, and they're in my other collection. So yes, S Volume 1 here, and there are the other volumes in my collection. But um, I think it's quite easy to get hold of these volumes. I actually got them, uh, this one on eBay, but I got the rest of them on the June Manga website when they were for sale. So they were still available, easy to get hold of in that respect. So. Yeah, if you are interested in some yaoi novels, this one is hardcore kind of gangster, police, yakuza, you know, undercover agents, all that kind of stuff. A really dark theme, so if you like your yakuza themed manga, you might like this yaoi BL. Um, the, one of the characters is um, a cop who has had undercover uh, informers and one of them dies and he needs to try and find out what happened to his informer. So it's quite an interesting one. Um, I enjoyed it. I haven't read it for a long time though, but it stuck with me, so I understand what the story's about. But I kind of want to go back because I can't remember what happens in the end. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. This is one of the most famous uh, Yaoi novel series that have been uh, published in English, and that is Only the Ring Finger Knows. So in this drawer I have uh, volume one, the Lonely Ring Finger. I have Volume 2, The Left Hand Dreams of Him, and I have two copies of Volume 3, The Ring Finger Falls Silent. This is uh, written by Satoru Kanagi and Hotaru Odagiri. Um, there is a manga version as well, I think uh, one volume published by Jin Manga, so you can get the uh, manga version as well. Um, there is five vo volumes I think for this series and I have volume five I think but I don't have volume four. I think volume four is the one that's expensive and hard to get hold of. There's always one. There's always one. <laughs> Why is there always one? So yeah, will I ever complete this series? I don't think so. Um, it's probably going to be too expensive for me to get the other volume. But uh, this is the story of Yuichi and Wataru and their uh, their growth and it's quite a long series it covers their life in uh, high school and into university um, and into business and things like that so it's really interesting um, but I, it was kind of one that I, I enjoyed but I wasn't really fully fully invested and that's probably because I haven't read volume 4 <laughs> and I did read it a long time ago but um, yeah it's mostly about their miscommunication and um, their growth together. Their smexy times aren't as smexy as others, so it's not quite as hardcore. So, which may be why I'm like, meh, it's okay. It's kind of lighter, it's a bit fluffier, it's a li little bit more angsty for no reason, and I think that's the other reason I don't like Desire, the, the novel version. It's kind of angsty, but for no reason. Like, why is it so angsty? Like, get over yourselves. And um, The Ring Finger is one that is a little bit like that as well the kind of angst that there's no need to have. Meh. I, like, give me some real angst. Give me some Yakuza cops in love. That's the kind of angst I'm here for. So yeah, werewolves and vampires, that's what I'm here for. You know, high school boys who are just like, oh. <laughs> it's not really angsty enough for me as a novel. It doesn't sustain me. And yet they made five volumes, so yeah. Anyway, uh, one I will not be able to complete, I think.
This is a three volume series that is Cold Sleep, Cold Light and Cold Fever and it is written by Narise Konohara and the artwork is Nanao Saikawa. Um, as you can see the artwork um, changed slightly on the bottom. It has the, the newer Yaoi novel design at the bottom. So you can tell there's been evolution in, in the Yaoi novel at June. Um, so yeah, this is a story about, um, I think, someone else called Toru and some, oh, I can't remember his name, Fukushima or Fukujima or something like that. Um, and it's a story about memory loss. And to be honest, I love Narise Konohara. She does some great work and her works are usually very involved and they have a lot of plot and a lot of character growth. So I generally enjoy them. But this one I didn't really enjoy so much. There's a short story as well that carries on, so it's kind of like two stories that, that run in all of the volumes. Um, but yeah, this is probably my least favourite Narise Konohara story. I love all of her other ones, but this one I'm a bit... Mm, I don't know, I just felt like I didn't really connect with it. The, the whole memory loss thing is, is kind of a overplayed trope, and this one always felt like you could kind of tell where it was going. So it wasn't completely overly obvious, it just took a while to get there. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a slow burn <laughs> story. Over three volumes. Um, they are a little bit difficult to get hold of, um, the Cold Sleep trilogy, but I was incredibly lucky. I think I got each of them for about three pounds each, something like that, which is ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I'm chuffed to have them and I'm very happy to have more Narise Konohara. I love her as an author. so. Um, happy to have it but not my favourite of her works. This is Caged Slave written by Yuiko Takamura and illustrated by Anne Kanae and this is quite a thin volume one shot uh, novel and I love this one. This one I'd forgotten all about until I picked up and read the back and I was like oh yeah this one I love this one. Um, it's about a um, secretary who is in love with his boss and kind of gets dumped and goes to a bar in a high-class hotel and gets hit on by a high-class man and um, gets taken to his hotel room and given a wild night to passion. Um, but he doesn't tell him his name, so he doesn't know who he is. And so he ends up, um, of course, having to do business with this mystery sex god <laughs> and, uh, um, who seems to be absolutely infatuated with him as well. So it, all's well that ends well. <laughs> He's just got a bad boss, that's all his bad boss that he, he was in love with. So yeah, it's kind of one of those, um, yeah, I don't need you, I can get someone better. And yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's fun, it's easy read, it was really good. Um, and it was a short one, so it's like a nice, fun one to read. Cage Slave. I totally forgot about this and I loved it, it was great. So yeah, I definitely recommend Cage Slave. To be perfectly honest, I um, have memory of reading this, but I do not have memory of what this story was actually about. Um, it's one of those fantasy stories, um, Dark Walker, um, written by Hikaru Yura and illustrated by Hirotaka Kisaragi. Um, so I recognised the artwork straight away and I read on the back um, the synopsis to try and remind myself of what this was about because I was like sure I've read it but I can't actually remember. Um, so when I started reading it was about um, someone who's in a dream worlds and uh, they become a dream walker um, so they're able to go into the world of dreams and they meet someone there who is their lover who happens to be a man and it's kind of like oh this kind of rings some bells but not a hundred percent and then at the bottom it said that it was written by Hikaru Yura uh, as an extension of the manga Dark Walker written by Hirotaka Kisaragi. So it's an ad adaptation, novel adaptation of a manga, which I don't think exists in English. It's, I don't think it's been translated into English. So they, they took the novel, but not the, not the manga, which I think is a bit odd, but there you go. Um, and it also says, by her uh, manga. So it's implying that Hirotaka Kisaragi is a woman. And I always thought Hirotaka Kisaragi was a man. I always thought that was I guess, never mind, I guess you learn something new every day. Um, I all, For some reason I always thought that, but never mind, maybe it's the name. Hmm. But yeah, Dark Walker, 
I have uh, vague memories of reading this, but not enough to be able to say whether it was a good story or not. So, hmm, there you go. Promise of Romance by Kyoko Akitsu and Toko Miyagi is a very typical um, play acting relationship becomes real kind of story. Um, very much uh, a romance trope, but one that is uh, written quite well and, you know, it serves its purpose. Um, Edward is an English aristocrat. This happens to be set in England and uh, he must marry by the time he is 26 to be able to inherit his fortune. Um, it has been stipulated in their will. <laughs> Who does that? No one does that. It's not real. It's so silly. You must marry, but 26 as well, such an arbitrary number. I could understand like 25. Maybe, maybe by the end of their 25th year they must be married. Anyway, um, Edward, he uh, meets Satsuki, who is an acting student, who's a Japanese uh, national who comes to uh, England to study acting, and he uh, employs him to pretend to be a girl, so he has to cross-dress as well. So if you like cross-dressing and you like um, pretend relationships becoming real, this is the kind of story for you. Um, I thought it was okay. It started off strong. I remember being like, oh, this is fun. And um, and by the end I was like, meh. So it was a strong start, but not the best finish um, in terms of its reading. Uh, for some strange reason, that's just how I felt about it. Um, I enjoyed it. It was okay. But um, it promised a lot and it didn't necessarily deliver uh, 100%. So. Yeah, it's a good one though, and it's really cheap. You can get this really cheap. I think I got this for about £3, so yeah, you can usually get a copy for not very much. I read this uh, last summer. Um, I managed to get a copy for a very good price. Uh, it was really cheap compared to what I've seen it go for. And I don't think it's worth the massive, massive amount of money that a lot of people are wanting to charge for it. This is Eat or Be Eaten, written by uh, Jinko, who you know, and the artwork is by Yamimaru Engine. And I think Yamimaru Engine did Voice or Noise. And I'm still missing volume three for that, so another one to get. But Eat or Be Eaten, I think uh, one of the characters, Ashizawa, maybe that's his name, he's uh, in the catering business side of things, so he does like development for restaurants and things, and he is tasked by a grande maison to find a chef to uh, open another uh, restaurant by this, um, you know, Michelin starred chef who's getting old a bit and he's like, well I want a new young fresh chef to run my uh, my new restaurant. Um, so he has to go and find um, a good chef and he comes across this lovely little restaurant. It's owned and run by the chef and he thinks this is perfect. I'm falling in love with this person's food and uh, the chef wants nothing to do with him. <laughs> so it's a bit of push and pull, that kind of thing. So one's like I really want you and the other guy's like I'm gay and I want you but in another way and I don't have anything to do with your business. <laughs> That's kind of it. It's good though. It's a nice, easy read. It does t kind of tend to drag on a bit. And I don't know if that's the Japanese or if that's the translation, but it seems to, like, maybe it needed an editor to just edit things out. And I'm not too sure if that's in the Japanese or if that's in the English. Uh, it lags slightly or the pacing or there's something about the, the, the reading of it that feels like it's a good story. It just could have been just just tweaked slightly to make it better as a reading experience but it's it's a fair story I liked it so yeah I read this last year which was good um, and if you can get a hold of a copy for a good price then yeah go for it but don't pay an extortionate price for it it's not worth it the last one I have in this drawer for my Yowie novels is The Selfish Demon King and that is written by Kyoko Wakatsuki and the illustrations are by Nazuki Kojima. Now the artwork is quite uh, obvious, that's very distinctive style for uh, Nazuki Kojima. Um, the story is about, um, a, as you could imagine, a selfish demon king. It's kind of like, yeah, that's pretty much what it's about. Um, uh, Dugu, Dugu, I think is how you pronounce it. He uh, kidnaps uh, Shizuku 
from the human realm and takes him to the demon realm um, and says, right, okay, you're going to be my uh, life partner because you're actually not um, 100% human, you're actually an incubus and uh, you're worth a lot and so I'm going to have you for my life partner. And that's kind of what the story is. <laughs> um, it was okay, it was throwaway, it was a fast read, but it wasn't particularly like um, exciting. I don't know, I didn't really uh, feel um, that enthused about the story as a whole. It is one of those, you know, fun to read, if you like fantasy ones, and I do like fantasy, so um, in that respect it was quite good, but eh, it was only okay, it wasn't brilliant. Um, so this is all I've got in my drawer of Yowie novels. Um, there's a few I still need to get, probably around um, three or four titles uh, of Dune Manga uh, novels or Yaoi novels that I haven't purchased yet. But those ones that I can't get hold of or I haven't gotten hold of yet generally tend to go for a lot of money. So um, this probably will be all I can actually get. Um, one day maybe I'll be able to get the others, but I doubt it very much. But I do have others in my collection. Now, as you can see from the photograph, I have some Aino Kusabi. Um, I have, I think, the easier ones to get hold of. There are eight volumes, so I only have three. I doubt that I'm going to get the other ones. They're very expensive, difficult to get hold of. There was talk of them being republished. Um, well, I'll pass on that. <laughs> I've also got uh, love, uh, Like a Love Comedy and Little Darling um, and then there's another one of um, Only the Ringfinger Knows, that's another volume 2 I think. Um, the Aristocrat and the Desert Prince, um, that one's quite a nice one. There's The Guilty as well, so I have um, volumes 1 and volume 4, so volume 3 is the one that I'm missing. There's S, so volume 3. Then at the bottom I have The Man Who Doesn't Take Off His Clothes, and this is a Narase Konohara story in two volumes. I think I have quite a few copies of volume 1, yep, three, three copies, and two copies of volume 2. Um, it's an okay story, it's not my favourite, um, but it's um, an interesting one. I don't really get what the conflict is so much, but I, I did enjoy reading it. It was an okay story. Um, it, but it is in some way connected to probably my favourite <laughs> Yaoi novel, and that is Don't Worry Mama, and that is by Narase Konohara as well. And this, for some strange reason, is my absolute favourite jam of a Yaoi novel. It's so silly, but for oh, I just love it. It's, I love it. I think I read it all the time. Every time I go up there, I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna get this. Um, it's such a good story. So bad, but so good. So it's about um, uh, a boss and his uh, subordinate. They're in the research and development department of a pharmaceutical company, and they're trying to develop some sort of new cream or potion or something. And they go to um, a deserted island, you can see where this is going, um, to try and find some herbs and they get stuck on the island um, and for some reason, they've got lots of little different reasons behind how they got stuck on the island, but they get stuck on this island for uh, several, I think, weeks. Um, the boss is absolutely awful, he's a terrible person. Um, the way that he's drawn in terms of how he's described as it's really quite sizist, it's not very nice, but he, he's not a nice character. But his character redemption is odd. <laughs> it's a terrible story. I can't sell it to you as a good story, but I love it. Um, oh, it's awful. It's really bad. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, it's really bad. And I really love it. I love how bad it is. If, if you've read this and gone, oh, that is garbage. That is hot mess garbage. That's terrible. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I love it. It's great. <laughs> Um, so yeah, he wins over his, um, he, he ends up falling in love with his boss, even though he hates his boss and his boss is described as uh, disgusting. And he, he is a not a very nice person as well. Ugh, oh, it's just really bad. Um, there's a huge big time skip as well, which I hate. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, happy in the end, as you'd imagine. Anyway, uh, so there's another volume of Cold Sleep, and then I've got All You Need Is Love, Volume 2. Volume 1 is really difficult to get hold of. Um, so yeah, difficult, and I don't think I'll be able to. I did see it on, um, just on, like a normal bookshop. And when I went to go buy it, they were like, oh yeah, sorry about that. That should, that page should not exist. We don't have that. Um, and then some more Only the Ring Finger Knows. That's Volume 2 and Volume 5, so it is Volume 4 that I'm missing. Some more S. Immoral Darkness, which I think is another sort of Yakuza business type one. Some more of the man who doesn't take off his clothes. Gentle Cage. I can't remember what this is about. No. No. I think it's to do with art. Artists living out in the wilds. I think that's what it's to do. More S. Another copy of Dark Walker. More of the man who, who doesn't take off his clothes. Clear Skies. Um, I love Clear Skies. I have some of the manga volumes as well. Um, body language, sweet admiration, sleeping with money. Oh, I think that's to do with like low level Yakuza and a high level Yakuza. <laughs> and then Passion, Forbidden Lovers, which is the novelization of Passion, which is a four volume manga series, So, uh, which you can get from June. So yeah, that's my full collection of Yaoi uh, novels um, printed by June Manga. Mm -hmm.